Go Dan. <clears throat> oh, I just got a message. You got this. Never mind, she's coming. But you can still start. Wow, Dan. You were going to... St- oh, man. I can't believe you were going to start without Kim. Listen, the less people that have to witness this embarrassment that's about <laughs> to happen... The you mean this embarrassment that you told Brian he could stream? And record. <laughs> Listen, I for gotta, posterity, I can only improve through failure, so I have to be able to watch this. Dan is literally I don't think the you only fully one who understand how much <laughs> you can probably just sit back and let us carry whatever is going on. That yeah, it, yeah it's going to be super fine. Yeah, and you Sorry. know, like Dan said, he watched my video time five times. That video <laughs> has five views on it. <laughs> So, no, it doesn't. So, it has 22. Yeah. One of those is me. <laughs> I was making like, a joke, Tim. Gosh. Because I had to go and check, and I was like, why the fuck are there this many views of this bullshit? Well, the joke is there's one from me, there's one from Don, and then the other 20 were Dan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'm actually here now. Kim's here, everybody. Hello, Kim. Hello. Hi. Hello. For this one shot, I'm going to assume that all of your characters have met each other and know each other, so we don't have to do an awkward meet and greet. Um, but, but awkward I... meet and greets are a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can still be awkward, but we don't need to say my name is blank. What's your name? I we got will you covered. Do... I'll steal from a. Uh... Both Tim and Brian, though, and I'll do the just the introductory. Why don't you guys go down your characters and tell me who you are? So, Brian, who are you playing? I'm writing my name. <clears throat> the name's John Bass. I'm a hobgoblin, and I play the bass. Candace, I already want to quit this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Chicota, and I'm a human monk at level three. Chris, <clears throat> I am Elin of the Isle of White Cloud. I'm an ASMR, <laughs> level three. Say ASMR. Yep. Or ASMR. <laughs> Absolutely not, Brian. <laughs> It's only yes. an ASMR when you play them. <laughs> Kim? <clears throat> I don't know what I'm playing yet. Give me five minutes. <laughs> all right, we'll come around to you. Tim? <laughs> all right, all right, I'm getting to it. The name's Thibodorf Quint. Dwarven Battle Ranger. At your service. <laughs> Can and I just Nikki. say real quick, I hate the name Pwent. It's so unsettling to me. <laughs> There's something about it's it. Good. This is like a, a weird, like, kind of side battle between you guys. Like, who can <laughs> make the, the most specifically upsetting character <laughs> for the other? <laughs> what do you got, Nikki? My name is Essentia, and I am a crystal healer. <laughs> I'm a cleric. <laughs> a what? Oh, a cleric. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, too. Yeah, I'm a cleric Human? as well. And I forgot to mention, too. Elf. I'm a crystal healer. <laughs> Barbarian. <laughs> I only heal crystal. crystals. I, I did not heal. Uh, I bash you over the head with a crystal until you're feeling better. Look, my character's name is Crystal Healer. <laughs> Damn it! You took it. Ah. Oh. I was just making a crystal healer. What are you doing? I got there first. I did this on my lunch break. <laughs> Me too. I love how you got superhero voice when you said that. I did this on my lunch break. My cape flapped a little too when I said it. So. <laughs> Kim, you ready or are you still building? Uh, uh, Who is Candace? Her new Her character name. is Cape Flap. <laughs> cape Flap the human fighter. <laughs> Who's Candace playing? I, I'm playing Jakota, the monk. 
I can't believe you stole Dakota <laughs> from the <laughs> from Little Realms. <laughs> Look, I needed to make him a uh, stats anyway. That's true. So, two Boys birds, one life. stone on my lunch break before a car nap. Um, okay, so her name is Caprilia. You can call her Cape. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> um, she is going to be a bard, because I can roll that the fastest. <laughs> cool. Uh, race. A, <laughs> a uh, <laughs> She's going to be a fart cloud. She's gonna be lumpy space princess. Is that it cool? really makes her cape flow. Right. Race to be determined. Potentially something gassy. Um, what's her name? Air Ashima. Aprilia. Um, what is it? Air genie. What air? Um. Uh, Genasi. Yeah. Genasi? Air Genasi. Genasi. All right. Uh, actually, I'm go. gonna go human because it's easier. Okay. Fair. So everyone got their snacks away from the microphone? Absolutely not. I'm going to be eating this whole time, so I'm going to mute myself. All right, well, that's fine. It first <laughs> sounds like it would be sold by the flex tape guy at three in the morning. Well, the first part of this grand adventure is me just reading to you guys. So, <laughs> uh, You are all, as I mentioned earlier, you've all known each other. We don't need to do a meet and greet. Um, but you are all attending the Autumnal Harvest Festival in the halfling village of Mapleton. While most halflings resemble something like, uh, or their houses re resemble something like the Shire, where you guys are going, it looks a lot like Ewok Village from Star Wars. It's just trees and canopies, cool stuff like that. Um, Mapleton is inside of a forest because these little halflings kept getting raided constantly on their farms. So they moved. And they came up with a pretty clever defense. Every time they get attacked, they just climb up in the trees and they pull up their rope bridges and they throw rocks at people and it seems to work and they're doing great and they're doing so great that they have an autumnal harvest festival because they want to give thanks to the gods they want to give thanks to the land pretty much they've never been happier they are known you guys in the surrounding areas you know that mapleton is famous not only for its weird tree fort style ewok village but they're famous for maple syrup. They grow was, a lot of... Go ahead. I was literally about to say, please tell me they're famous for their maple syrup. They are definitely famous for their maple syrup. Um, they were farmers, but they're able to kind of do like this forest farming where they grow like uh, walnuts and berries and pick mushrooms. It's, I don't know. It's fantasy. It's working. Um, so it's midday. You guys have been on this long ass, like 10 mile hike to get there together. And you see just everything is in grand festival mode. There's vendors everywhere selling food, wooden toys, weapons, doodads, knickknacks. You hear bards but you don't see them. That's because they're on kind of the upper echelon of the Ewok village. There's multiple tiers and they're all like 10 feet above you on these little terraces, just tooting their little satyr horns. Like, you also hear like carnies just kind of barking away at all like the attendees, like step right up, step right up. Smells, just berry pies, sweet rolls and, Everything's just covered in maple glazes. What do you guys want to do? John Brace is interested in the uh, in the bards, and so he's going to try and make his way to tier three or whatever it was. Sure. There's definitely like step ladders that you can climb to get up there. There, The bards are on kind of tier one, which is like 10 feet above oh. the ground. Okay, I'm going to tier one. All right. Uh, we will get back to John. Does, what does anyone else want to do? Jakota wants to go get food. Okay. Capriella like, will go with Jakota. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, how about this booth? This booth looks like a good one. And Jakota just like 
bounces on up to the vendor. And it's like, what you got? Well, I've got pumpkin pies. I've got pumpkins. I've got peanut butter. And he grabs a little, like, piece of peanut butter off his beard. I've got... I've got bananas. Sometimes I mash bananas. What are you Hi. looking for? Hi, how about just the pumpkin pie? One pumpkin Wait. pie. That'll be... 25 Oil. gold. I can I can, I can hear the spit hitting the FedEx packages right now. <laughs> I'm so glad that are right now. <laughs> Sounds like driving in the rain. Uh, uh, I left my umbrella uh, in the car, too. You can all have 100 gold, by the way. Oh, oh I was going to say. Sir, I don't think I have. Oh, here's 25 gold. And he hands it over. <laughs> this better be the entire pie, sir. Oh, that, that whole pie! As soon as you walk away, he's like, "Shut <laughs> <laughs> uh, You can eat the pie. It, it's or do you want to save it for later? I'm going to share the pie with Gabriella or whoever. Ca- yeah. <laughs> Caffriella. Caffriella. Cape. <laughs> I didn't make a note of everyone's names. I'm gonna. I did not write down anyone's name. <laughs> yeah, Dakota's going to yeah. share the pie with Cape. When you first... Well, thank you, dearie. I, I much appreciate a pumpkin pie. This is oh, amazing. Thank you. It's, it's like the pumpkin pie. spice season. <laughs> it is indeed. I wonder if there's any pumpkin spice lattes around here. <laughs> you smell well, pumpkin spice lattes. Let's mm. go find the pumpkin spice lattes. What's... I'll buy this round. Let's jump back to John. Oh, while, yeah. while they while they ate their pumpkin, you probably finally climbed up and scampered to where the bards are. What do you want to do there, Mr. Bass? Uh, I think I want to go to any that, not single bards. I want to go to bards who are just like hanging out in a group, but maybe lacking a bass player. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, you see that you climbed up. They're, they look like they're kind of in between sets, and the bass player of this group is missing. Maybe he went down to go get some some omnoms. How convenient! So they're just all <laughs> kind of sitting there, like, uh, "Can we help you?" I was thinking more. Can I help you? I'm a bass player, and you seem to be lacking one. So I was wondering if I could fill in. Hey, man, we get paid by the hour, not by the song, so we're kind of on break right now. Whoa, you get paid? (laughs) Yeah, we we get paid. This is our job. Get out of here, poser. Oh, you ain't hurt. You you, you shouldn't shouldn't knock it till you hear it. I'm going to pull my bass out. (laughs) I guess I just have it slung over my back, so I'll swing it around. Roll, roll me a performance check, Brian. Let's see if you impress these these uh, professionals. Dun, 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 dun. Oops. That's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> Brian. You're better at music than me. What does that sound like? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're uh, mm, they're annoyance of me has gotten me a little frazzled so i just i hit some wrong notes and i i'm trying to play like really typical songs that anybody would know basically smoke on the water level songs and i just screwing it up all right you you hear them you see them turn their back to you and they're speaking real loud so that you can hear it's like i guess they let anyone in here now Hmm. amateurs I'm a little off my game right now. I think maybe I need a drink or two, or three, or four, or five, and I'm gonna head back down to see if I can find like a beer garden or something. Yeah, you can. Definitely that is exactly that. where Puent is heading. Is towards a beer a beer garden. Wait, the dwarf is gonna go get beer? No. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> All right, there is a beer garden, but there is unfortunately a line. I mean, this is a festival. And there's just a sea of halflings in front of you, about 10. And why don't you make a, a perception check for me? Ooh, 
Um, not great at these. <laughs> That'd be a five. Ooh, that's bad. All right, well, he got a bad result. <laughs> <laughs> you perceive the body odor from the guy in front of you, and you notice that he... <laughs> He must be a farmer or something because he's just got like pig shit all over his pants. And he turns around. The BO is worse than the pig shit. And he's like, Hi, my name's Franklin. Franklin Farfanugan. I haven't seen you here before. He's a close talker. So he's getting, <laughs> he just wants to be your friend, Mr. Point. That's and I'm nowhere near drunk enough for this situation. Oh, Back off, friend. <laughs> hey, you called me friend. Thanks about that. I like that. <laughs> well, if you stick with me. God, this guy's voice is going all over. <laughs> <laughs> I was if you stick like with me, partner. All... <laughs> weird quirks. We're going to get in there in about 25 minutes, eh? Did you enjoy me in the movie Split? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you also Ooh, notice man. with that five that the uh, the alcohol that they're serving is not in big dwarven mugs that you're used to. They're getting like these, I don't know, kind of little dainty like mason jars, like half mason jars, little halfling cups. So it may right, or well, may may or may not be well, worth it. Going to order fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> that was good workaround. I like that creativity. <laughs> Uh, there are carnival games. There, there's also shops here. You guys all have 100 gold, so if anyone wants to, I don't know, visit one of those guys, you can. Nudge, nudge. I'm going to wander the streets and find the shop with the warmest aura. Um, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> right. You don't even have to roll for that. You just, you can kind of smell a shop. It kind of looks like like a like one of the uh, mushroom houses from the Smurfs, like but there's just like <laughs> pink little aromas coming off of it. Like this place sells what you can. It, it smells like perfume, so you're guessing it's got some sort of like potions or shit. How delightful! Yes, I go in there. I guess Hello. I follow with my pumpkin spice latte. So you see a, a grizzled old hag of a shopkeep. It's kind of a weird disparity since the place is just so frou-frou and lovely and lace. And this lady looks like she is Ursula from Little Mermaid. You shouldn't ever judge books by shelves, darling. <laughs> Why are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm not. I'm talking to the divine. <laughs> is that what they're calling it these days? Well, listen, strangers, I don't allow loitering in my shop. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I'm just browsing for now. <laughs> what? What's in here? <laughs> All right, well, let me open up the little book here. <laughs> uh, so they got some cool potions. Let's say you can have a potion of fire breathing or that she shows you a, uh, a milky brown potion that kind of smells like dog wet dog hair and she says that'll turn you into a giant and make you really big um she's got this tiny little like little baby like dropper bottle kind of like a cbd oil bottle and she goes this one will i'm sorry what was that voice <laughs> uh this one's gonna it's gonna get you fucked up that's what's gonna do <laughs> We should get that one, Essence. That does sound like a marvelous experience. How much was it? <laughs> I go ahead and buy the fuck fuck you up one. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, for a couple of uh, fru frus like you, it's going to be only. Um, she's thinking. <laughs> uh, 30 gold. No, that's how much they sell pies for. It's going to be 150. Oh, oh, I've only got God. 20, and I turn and start to leave. <laughs> she says nothing. Ah, shit. Uh, <laughs> I leave anyway. <laughs> All 
All right, so you're gone. I mean, you, and then uh, <laughs> or did you follow her or do you just stay there? Dakota like looks back and forth between her and the shopkeep and says, "Thanks for your trouble," and then follows Essence out. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He's never sounded so much like a Muppet on our show. He has not. I love it. Okay. Look, I'm picking a voice and I'm sticking to it. No, I appreciate your your commitment to your role. <laughs> uh, Elon, have you done anything yet? So, um, Elon has. Um, we arrived here all in a cart, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, when we first got here, um, I was busy sort of um, applying a, a thin layer of oil to the chain chain mail that I wear. And then I um, donned it back on, and um, uh, I look around. Um, for one, can you see the sky from this area, or is there too many trees? Uh, you can maybe see, like, quarter-sized pockets of the sky. It's mostly canopy. Okay. Is the, um, the moon visible in any of those uh, pockets? Uh, tell you what. Just give me, do you want high or low? Uh, I'll do uh, high. Okay. You got it. There's a moon. All right. Uh, what phase is it in? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's a crescent moon. Waxing crescent. Right. So um, before she heads into the, the town space there, she um, kneels down um, and kind of grasps the, the handle of her mace as she kneels down and um, places her head on the, the, the end of the mace as she prays and to the moon there. And then um, she gets up and she looks around. Um, is there anybody that's like sort of uh, looks to like um, to be like a knight of any sort or anything? Hmm. Well, you see that bumpkin who's talking to Plant in front of Plant, but a guy clad in scale mail walked right behind Plant. So yeah, you see you see a knight. All right. Um... Do they happen to be wearing like a sort of uh, white cirque coat and um, with a blue patch on the shoulders? <laughs> hmm. All right. That's going to require another higher low roll. What do you want? Uh, I'll do uh, high again. Okay. You lucky dog. Yes, he does. Oh, okay. Um, I am going to um, try to uh, avoid this person. <laughs> and um, when I do this, I'm. <laughs> I am going to uh, kind of circle around the other direction and, and try to um, remain inconspicuous. I'm also going to like pull my um, my cloak around so that it uh, obscures my shoulders where my uh, patches are. You know, you're making me pull out noble guide perception. <laughs> I'll roll it at disadvantage because he doesn't know you're there. Okay. Uh, you know what? As you're eyeing this bozo, you don't see him nod his head towards you so you feel pretty safe that he does not okay. know you exist all right and so uh yeah like i, I shroud myself and then um walk towards the uh, shop that i saw everybody else walk into all right well as you're walking you kind of get barked at uh, i need a new voice <clears throat> hey hey you <laughs> miss fancy boy you want to test uh... your luck I, I turn around and, and uh, look at who it is. Is it the knight? No. Oh, okay, it's good. Not, <laughs> it's not the knight. It's a. Uh, it's just a, a a carnival barker. The guy's wearing a jester's cap. He's got chef pants on for some reason, and he's got a uh, a denim denim jacket. <laughs> and he <laughs> is, and he is behind a booth. He's like, oh, fancy boy. You look like you're here to party. Why don't we get it started early? I got a drinking contest. Win lots of money. Mm -hmm. uh, when he calls me a boy several times, like <laughs> I, I give him this stern look and um, basically disintegrate him with my uh, <laughs> with my angry face. Uh, roll me intimidation. Figuratively, at least, yeah. Oh. Nope, no D20s in there. I had every die but a D20 in my uh, in my dice tower. There we go. 
Okay, that's going to be a uh, two plus zero. <laughs> he gives you the stink eye back, and he actually like puts one finger to his nose and just shoots out a bogey with the other one. I've Ugh. seen your type before. <laughs> so I'm going to I be passing of... <laughs> behind Ellen, and I would like to surreptitiously try to uh, do some vicious mockery on this mofo. Oh, <laughs> uh, that requires what, like a, a stealth or a sleight of hand? Is there like a sub, like a, a hand action you have to do to cast that? Oh, you're actually going to make me look this up. <laughs> oh, I'll look it up. Hey, can I Here, deflect, just... hey, Dan? Yeah. Can I deflect missiles, the loogie, right back at him? <laughs> uh, I mean, at disadvantage. I don't know if you were prepared for for my bogey. Uh. Um. Oh, how do how does this work? Hold on. Uh, deflect missiles. You could use your reaction to deflect or catch a missile when you are hit by. Oh, it has to be me hit. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, you can reach your hand towards. It. I'll tell you what happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who can pass that up? <laughs> so vicious mockery is voice only. So can I just be yeah. like? He won't. He okay. won't see your move in your mouth if you're hiding behind Elon. All right. So Can I just. Oh, continue. No, nope, your boogies are over. It's time for vicious mockery. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just going to kind of whisper under my breath. A better Carney would have gotten this guy, gotten Elon to play easier. Something like that. Gosh. And. Ah, it's terrible. Um, no, no, this, <laughs> this guy feels like shit right now. Like he saw this smug bastard who, like, was just felt like he was king of the world for talking down, who is clearly his better, like a noble. And now he's just sort of like looking at himself. He's like, oh, denim shirt and cook pants. I'm not even a cook. And my, <laughs> my voice sounds like Kermit. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and he just kind of puts his head down on the table and <laughs> slowly pulls down the closed uh, screen. <laughs> you know, I really Alan. think I should start like uh, considering the hierarchies of lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're all having a good time at this festival. <laughs> You guys are doing your goofs. You're hearing the halflings continue their little do 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 And uh, eventually, you see a very large halfling, almost dwarf-like, which is pretty big for a fucking halfling. And it's an old halfling, too. Just great big bushy beard. And there's kind of like a... Like all these uh, shops and everything are in kind of a horseshoe. In the middle of it is this raised dais. Old man halfling gets up on the dais. He grabs a uh, kind of what are those communication stones, things that are basically fantasy microphones. Mm-hmm. And he taps it. And then he's like, uh, what does it do? <clears throat> attention, attention. Can I get everyone's attention, please? <laughs> and uh, you don't know this guy. But you notice that all the other little halflings stop what they're doing, including the barking carnival. So he's, he's probably somewhat important. I, I want to thank everyone for coming out this weekend. It's been 30 years since we halflings first migrated to this forest. And well, every year has been more prosperous than the last. This festival is, is our way of showing thanks to the gods and also to you customers who keep buying our syrup. I like to think of you all as saps. Ah, but my favorite <laughs> saps. So, let us all take a moment to toast to Mapleton and to each other to continued wealth and health. While he's talking, a whole bunch of waiters are moving around with uh, little trays. And they came to each and every one of you with uh, shot glasses <gasps> full of maple whiskey. Oh. oh my god. I thought you were going to say maple syrup. <laughs> I mean, they have both. <laughs> you, for, the, for the people. Uh, may I offer you whiskey or syrup? I'll have one of each. <laughs> Very well. So, <laughs> uh, you guys 
can each take uh, a shot of either. And I'm kind of curious, which, which one do you guys take? Whiskey. Capriel has never said no to a good whiskey. Dwarf. Um, can I try and sleight of hand a couple of them under my mitts <laughs> when I grab? Yeah, how do you, you got? You have to describe it for me. Though. Actually, you should roll first. That makes more sense. Go for it. I will um, loudly play um, my lute next to him as he's attempting to do this to try to give him a little bit of cover. <laughs> Hey, that's an N20. <laughs> oh, shit. Didn't even so need my help. what he does is uh, when he reaches up to grab one because he's got these giant fucking bear-like paws, he basically <laughs> just grabs a couple of them and just keeps his hand over the top so you can't quite see exactly what he's doing until he pulls it away. And I imagine the waiter looks down like a few seconds later like, what? wait, wait, I, this was full a second ago and... He's probably got like four or five shots. He was so enamored with that song that it was kind of like when you face out. So, I mean, in his head, he doesn't know what happened and he just kind of blames himself for spacing out. And he's like, he, he leaves before he does. He goes, that was a very good song. Why? You're welcome, honey. And uh, Elon, what'd you drink? Or Elon, sorry, I'm going to call you the wrong name throughout the whole game. Yeah, Elon. Um, she uh, takes <laughs> Elon the, Musk, the what shot. Drink? <laughs> uh, she takes the the shot of whiskey and um, looks to the to the moon, and then um, holds it up to the moon, and then uh, <laughs> pours it into the ground, and then places the glass back on the tray. I fucking love how serious your character is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then lastly, the, the hobgobber. You, you came down after being kind of embarrassed a little bit, but you were offered either syrup or whiskey. What do you grab? I uh, I see both of them on the tray, and I've had enough to drink that I'm having a hard time telling which is which, so I'm going to roll 50-50. All right. Uh, we'll say evens are the... Or you got it. You know how to 50-50. You know um, I forgot to decide before I rolled, so evens are the <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> oh, shit. Which one is evens? Uh, we'll say evens are the whiskey. I got the syrup. Right. <laughs> I rolled a three. Oh, man. It is like cloyingly sweet because you thought it was whiskey and you're just like, oh, it's, it's good, but it's like, oh, why do people drink this? All right, so everyone who grabbed whiskey. Uh-oh. Nothing. <laughs> Fucking with you. All right, I so... did. <laughs> uh, Make see. a constitution what? save. You're now dead. Oh, I rolled. I chugged the whiskey. You're good. I mean, it's a, it is a halfling size shot glass. Even Aww. maybe Dakota is not going to get drunk. Unless you really want to role play that you're an ultra lightweight, then I'm cool with that. Did well, I? Halflings Just are heavy drinkers. That so shot a halfling shot glass should be huge. All right, well, mm -hmm. he knows more than me, so we'll, we'll say, why don't you roll that constitution? Uh, well, okay, constitution is not my dump stat this time. Uh, 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 17. That's oh, do I need to roll the dice roller? I can use the dice roller. No, you don't have to do the dice roller. Roll, okay. Roll your dice. Uh, you're... I did. You're fine. Like 17, you pass your constitution check. Um, it's for all of you, it's the best damn whiskey you had. It's like sweet and smoky. It's it's wonderful. Oh, you, yeah. you, each, you each get 10 experience points from that. <laughs> except for except for the dwarf. You got like 80 or 90 from that because you just stole shit. Yeah. Do I still get the experience even though I poured mine into the ground as oh, a uh, sacrifice to my god? That's actually minus 10. So. <laughs> oh. I'm writing that down. <laughs> all right so you guys are enjoying it um the ground's enjoying it the crowd is enjoying it they're and you like pass you don't even need to roll you kind of hear people whispering oh that, that's billy butterscotch you gave a great speech again way to go billy we love you and while 
you guys are going through that mouth orgasm, you suddenly <laughs> you suddenly hear kind of a faint falling whistle sound effect. Uh, oh, Brian, it's your, uh, your slide whistle time. This is, is my your moment time to shine. Does Brian have a slide whistle? Is that what's happening? Oh, of course he does. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad I waited. That was great. So with that cartoon-like slide whistle and the following. (laughs) uh, (laughs) Please never make that sound in my ear holes again. You see, uh, kind of before you, everyone sees this because it was a loud ass thud before the squish. It is the flattened remains of a halfling guard. Uh, The crowd goes silent. Like some people, their mid mouth orgasm, like oh, oh, and then everyone is now just staring at this pancake of a man, and there's a pool of blood just slowly growing larger and larger. Like everything's kind of in slow motion, no one's saying anything yet, but then suddenly this small, like little eight year old girl just points at it and screams, and everyone roll perception. Quint is going to shout out. All right, who started the halfling yeah. tossing and didn't oh, let me know? Really <laughs> I feel like that was a bad addition to plan into the party. I don't think this normally happens at parties. I rolled really well. I rolled a 23. Code 23. Uh, who else got a uh, above 20? Elin did, and she was immediately looking around for that night she saw earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ollie, we'll have to. Uh, who got fifteen to nineteen? I got sixteen. I did. Okay. And uh, what did the rest of you get? Uh, I think I have a ten with my. Yeah. Plus Three. five, ten. And hobgabo. Three. All right, we'll start with the hobgabo. Real pretty shitty. <clears throat> um. Blood splattered in your eyes. You can't see shit. <laughs> uh, for Nikki. <laughs> Sorry, not Nikki. Uh, for essence. essence. Herbal essence. You are shocked. You find yourself just looking at the corpse because that face has a real gruesome expression. And despite this being really weird, you can't seem to focus on anything but that gruesome halfling face. For this whole. Block will need to be cleansed after this. For Thistledorf and uh, Caprilia, you guys see you hear combat and you see at least one of the uh, halfling sentry is engaged, but it looks like he's swatting at midair. You don't know what he's fighting, just that. There's a guard fighting above you, and that's that's kind of weird. And then for... Oh, I gotta go to Elon last. You did a weird thing. For <laughs> uh, Jakota, you look up in the canopies, and you see it's like it's about 50 feet tall, but you were able to make out three separate halfling sentries, and they're all dressed in the same armor, so they just stand out like sore thumbs. But you also notice that they are engaged in combat what looks like a cat-sized creature, but it has bright orange wings. Hmm. And actually, since you rolled above 20, hmm. um, why don't you make me a nature check? Uh, 16. All right. You know, it's... I mean, you've heard fairy tales of fairy dragons. You're thinking to yourself, no. Well, no. maybe? No. No. No, definitely Might... no. I have a 10 in intelligence. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Elon, you said you were in... <laughs> you said with your 20 you want to look for that that doofus? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Um so while this is going on, you see that noble with the remind me of the color scheme he was wearing again? Uh, white surcoat with a blue um, patch on the shoulders. Okay. You get a better look at his face this time, because he's he's kind of opposite you in the horseshoe, except 
you're able to see his face dead on because he's staring directly at the halfling, not at you. And you notice a scar on his face. A scar... Left side. His left side. All right. And he also has... Uh, what's He also has a silver amulet around his neck that kind of looks vaguely familiar to you. Oh, okay. So that, that's what you see with your, your 20 doofus roll. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys, that's what you all see. What do you guys want to do? What is the quickest way up to that platform? Is it like... So everything is... The, plat- which, the platform that uh, Mr... That the name? fairy dragon's on. Oh, the fairy dragon. All right, so it's probably about 10 feet away, because that was the one you just looked straight up and saw. It's about 10 feet away, but it is, this one's like right below the canopy, so it's 40 feet high of climbing a rope ladder. Uh, I think I'm just going to use my movement to go up the rope ladder. Okay. I have... Like sprint to get up there? Yeah. I, my my walking speed is 40 feet as a monk, which means I think climbing is half that. So mm-hmm. I can make it all the way up the rope on my turn if I do I, nothing but rope climb. I will tell you what you see after we get through everyone else. Uh, yeah. blood, blood splatter in your eyes. What are you doing? Wiping the blood out of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what you the wipe? hell was that? Um, oh, you see, I you see the halfling now. Go ahead, Candace. I also want to point and bring everyone else's attention to the weird thing. There we go. <laughs> That's the <laughs> other. Guys, guys, look up in the tree. It's something out of a fairy tale. And also, I don't think it's part of the festival. I'm going to pour All the right. beer on my face and try to wash off some of the blood, and then I'm going to look up where she's seen. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> All right. <laughs> John, you kind of—I don't want to keep making you roll perception checks. So you, she's pointing directly at what you look at. You now see a halfling soldier dressed in a uh, ringmail with a bow, and he's trying to like not be pushed off. He's doing the American gladiators basically with what looks like a from this distance, it's a cat-like creature with orange ring wings, like cat size with orange wings, but probably more lizard-like. Uh, so we did Jakota, we did John. Who else wants to tell me what they're doing? As soon as, uh... is going to start charging towards the combat. Alright, you got... Actually, roll me... Thimbledorf, why don't you roll me a perception? Real quick. Well, I'm terrible at those, so that should go poorly. I could do them all day. Five. Okay. You just got kind of dwarven rage now and a little bit of gusto from that that sweet, sweet whiskey that you downed. So uh, you don't hear anything else, but your eyes are locked in on that combat scene. So you are following the footsteps of Dakota and are going to try to go to where that fight is. Yeah, and I'm going to dash and uh, use up my whole action uh, running. Or does, does that put you like on top of it, forty feet, or are you still climbing? I, it would be, it would be fifty feet that I would of movement that I would have. So I would have to be hot on Chakota's heels. Okay, I mean, you guys will both be able to get there with fifty feet. I'll say because it was ten feet away. Okay, from Chakota, and that, it's so, theater of the mind. I'm not going to say that you were eleven feet away. So, but I'll describe I've... what. As they're all running about, I would like to do my uh, mantle of inspiration as a glamour bard. Um, as a bonus action, you expend one use of your bardic inspiration to uh, grant yourself a wondrous appearance. So, like Ooh. my normally just kind of brown, regular hair, kind of turns to this beautiful purple with sparkles, and my cape really billows out around me as this happens. And um, so, I get to pick three of them that get five temporary hit points and they could move up to its speed toward me without provoking opportunity attacks. 
wait, no, it doesn't have to be toward me. Just they can move their speed <laughs> without provoking opportunity attacks. Um, so I'm going to go with the dwarf, the monk, and uh, pick. I don't care. Brian and Chris, fight it out. <laughs> All right, you son of a bitch. All right, the hobgobbo. <laughs> Put up the dukes. <laughs> There we go. And the other bard. There we go. Perfect. Do you want to move at all? Um. You see two I'm... people are already climbing up the ladder. Um, there is a... There is the dead dwarf in front of you. Um, actually, the other one that was fighting something that was seemed to be just invisible, is that on our level or is that one level up? So... Remind me again, what was your perception? Were you the 14 to 15? Yeah, I was 16. Okay. 16. So you ended up seeing... Um, oh, so you saw separate half lane. So there's multi... There, let's say there's four. There's four of these little canopy centuries, all at different heights. Um, they went to the closest one. The other one is only, we'll say, 20 feet tall. But that one is about 30 feet away, so a total of 50 feet away. And there you see, in the distance, another halfling fighting one of these creatures. And the other ones, we'll say, are equal distance. stay at the bottom of the ladder for the moment. Okay. How far did you say this guy fighting the little cat dragon is? Uh, the one that Jakota and the dwarf are going towards are 50 feet away. I mean, they're hate this spatial part. <laughs> I'll say <laughs> they're all 50 feet away, but there's okay. four of them. So you okay. pick one. I call out, uh, I cast command and I call out stop to the, to the dragon thing. Um, so it takes, it makes a wisdom saving throw. Give me un momento. Look, got an ability against magic. <clears throat> Uh, and a, what does it make? And a, wisdom. a wisdom saving th DC 13. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, you. I failed. What happens? It stops. So I guess however you want to interpret it, it like just kind of stops moving entirely. Oh, fuck. It's flying. Um, <laughs> okay, so well, it fucking falls on the ground. This <laughs> just kind of stops mid-motion. Its wings stop. At this point, the dwarf and uh, Thimble... <laughs> Sorry, I am keep calling you the dwarf. The dwarf and Jakota, they see that it's a fairy dragon at this point. You guys got close enough. It is an orange fairy dragon, and it just kind of freezes mid-fight. And it just plummets uh, down the down the 50 feet. Brian, you want to give me hit me with that, that it, sweet drop music? It does say in the, um, the rules on that that if it's a flying creature, it'll just fly in a small like circle. Uh, oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, so it won't... All like, right. So instead of the insta kill, yeah. instead of the insta kill, it's just Ooh, kind of Ooh, yes, hovering. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All right, but ignore that, because it did not fall. At this point, let's go ahead and roll. <laughs> let's. Brian, okay. can you please, please, please put the slide, <laughs> the slide fluid thing with a little... I had to undo Please. it. Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian. Listen, it's not my fault you had so much to drink. Please. Please, Brian. <laughs> Please. All right, we can retcon the slide whistle. <laughs> no, that's not the reason I need to retcon it, because I feel like you're going to use the slide whistle in order to retcon the slide whistle. Let's just not do it anymore. Oh, we're rolling initiative. <laughs> yes, you yeah. are rolling initiative. And uh, don't, whoever got uh, above 20, let me know. <laughs> All right, above, <laughs> fi above 15. John Bass got <laughs> above 20. Okay. You got above 20? Mm -hmm. I got a 23. Uh, Nobody cares what your terrible character you got, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> No one else so far, his character's not been terrible tonight. No one got above 15. How about above 10? Yeah, I got above 10. Yeah, 10. Or, yeah. 
I got 13. 14. Yeah, mine was 14 as well. My dex is like 3. Oh, and I also that. had 13. Kim, did you give me a d6? Yes. Okay. I will not be using it. I'll forget. Okay. Got it. I'm trying to use your guys' actual characters. Yeah, I gave one to you and to Tim and to... I forget who's playing the monk. <laughs> Me. Joy. <laughs> okay. So we have a d6 of inspiration and five temporary hit points? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. cool. I'll use the shiny purple dice to represent my inspiration. And we can't tell Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Like a boss. I think I read that wrong. I think it's only the hit points. Oh, damn it. Where did I put it now? Yeah. Way to hype me up, Tim. My hit points and no opportunity <laughs> attacks for this town. Oh, okay. So I want you. What? Wait. You said that we. So we do. We can't get opportunity attacks against us. Yes, it's the temporary hit points, no opportunity attacks for this round, and no inspiration. Sorry. It's just called the oh. inspiration. Yeah, dude. Fuck that D six. I'd much rather not get attacks of opportunity against me. <laughs> All right. So until the end of my round, I believe. Starting with the initiative order, first to go is John Base. Okay. Uh, who? Where are the bat? Point me to our foe. All right. Uh, let's make it real simple. Draw a circle, and I'm gonna say you're in the middle. And then on the four edges of the circle, there are these these trees that climb up. Uh, we'll say each one climbs up 30 feet. And each one's 20 feet away from you. What are the trees climbing? Oh, uh, trees. They, they climb <laughs> They climb up to a canopy where they're in. Tim lets those slide because I'm below the Mendoza line. <laughs> There's four, four fairy dragons. Okay. North, east, west, and south. Oh. Tell me which one you want to fight. So each of them is fighting. A... Got it. I'm throwing my hand axe at the southern. Uh, 22 so to 50. attack. What, 50? Wait, is that with throwing range? I don't know. I thought, oh, you said there's 30 it feet is up. Not... In the you want to move first before you do? Uh, for some yeah. reason, I had in my head they were 30 feet away. Okay, I want to get it within uh, within 30 feet. All right, it will, we'll not math it out. We'll say you move, in, well, you move closer to it, and you throw that axe right up in the air. 30 feet is kind of vertical. And what did you roll? 22 to attack. Uh, fuck yeah. <clears throat> Seven uh, damage. Yeah. So the axe, just since you're throwing it from the bottom, the largest target you can see is the wings. And the axe clips both wings, it just slices right through, and it's kind of just hanging off the wing, and it's the weight of it is just slowly making more drags and rips. You hear a, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you feel pretty good about yourself. That was a nice hit for you. That's all. All right. Uh, next in the initiative is actually. Nikki. What? That can't be right. All right. I have bad notes. Oh, actually, think... no. So the one that the South Dragon that just got a wing is still has a far halfling in front of it. So it's going to try to hit that halfling real quick and then deal with Brian. Going to bite, but the pain of that goddamn axe is just throwing off its balance, and it bites really low and misses. To the dwarf and the monk, the fairy dragon is currently engaged with the halfling. It's going to try to finish that halfling, too. Uh, it much better. 
It takes a bite at the halfling's head and does. It does seven damage, and you see the helmet just kind of clamp down the halfling's head. Oh, you're no. Not, you're not sure he's going to be much use in this fight anymore because both of his hands, his weapons drop, both of his hands are just grabbing his head, and he's crying at this point. <laughs> uh, the other halflings that are, or the other dragons that are not engaged, you kind of hear it through the distance, their fight. The western dragon sounds like he's doing pretty good versus his halfling. And. Uh, Six damage, and then the East Halfling, or the East Dragon, does seven damage. So, back to... Now it's Nikki. Okay, so... Okay. I'm going to cast... Um, so, which one did I freeze? Or not freeze, but which one did I you froze temporarily froze the northern help? one that is currently being engaged by... Uh, a pathetic halfling, and then the dwarf and the monk. Are there any of the dragons that aren't being covered by any of our people at all? Just, yeah, two just of halflings. Them. Two of them. The west and the east are having their way with halflings. I'm going for the the wicked wyvern of the west, I guess. Um, and I'm going to cast sacred flame. Sacred flame. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh... He said that like it will go fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they make a a. Wait, let me... Yeah, they take a dexterity saving throw against a 13. So I gotta beat a 13? Mm-hmm. Um, easy peasy. So your spell, like it matrix dodges your spell. It's slow gotcha. motion to it. <laughs> Anything else? You gonna move it all? Um, I mean, I'm within easy range of being able to kind of take pot shots at both the eastern and western wyverns, right? Or cat things, dragon things. Yeah, if you're right in the middle, you can pot shot them both. Yep, I'm good here. All right, jumping to Jakota. Actually, no, Jakota, I lied. You're not up. It's up to... Kim. What? No, that should be right. I have Jakota as 13, and I have Kim and Elon at 14. I was 13 as well, though. Nikki was oh. 13. You, you got cheat jumped. We'll fix that next time. Oh, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna jump to the fourteens. So can you have the higher? Ah, uh, the DM's wife gets to go ahead and initiative. <laughs> I fucking see how this shit is. Well, <laughs> things happen. Hey, it helps if you unmute yourself. Um, so the current layout is we have one person going up to the west. We have two people going up the rope ladder to the topmost one, correct? North. Yeah, north guy. Yep. The north guy. And somebody hit the south. So the east is completely alone. Yep. Yes. Okay. I'm going to move close enough to be able to hit it. If I can, I have a movement speed of 30. Um, just throwing daggers, because that's what I got. <laughs> All right, you're going to throw it at the East Boy? Yeah. All right, well, he's having his way with the halfling right now. Uh, oh, roll, my. Roll that beautiful knife bean footage. That dragon's getting busy. That's a two. <laughs> so Six you... with my attack bonus. Oh, man. Well, yeah, I'm going to take some DM liberties here, so... <laughs> It flies up, and it uh, you you hear a thud, connected with meat, but you also hear a whimper that doesn't sound like a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> you hear, oh! <laughs> uh, how much damage did you do? Uh, thankfully, not a whole lot, because 1d4, dagger, lovely. Uh, uh, 4 damage. And then you hear a... <laughs> so he got the first kill. Nice job, Kim. I, I'm uh, gonna pull my loot out and play like I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do, do, do. 
You know what? You don't even have to roll for deception because at this point, all the halflings, it's kind of instinct when fights happen. They're just clambering up the rope bridges trying to get into their house. So uh, no one's even looking at the battle. They're just, they're fleeing. Um, back to Elon. Elon. Elon, I got it right. Elon. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, uh, let's see, um, which, which one was, uh, pointed at, uh, what, what, was it Essence or, uh, Chakota or Capriella that, um, noticed, like, the guy falling and then, like, first, like, pointed up at one of the dragon thingies fighting the halflings and That, that and was the north one. The okay. north one was where the first pointing happened. Oh, okay. Is that one still alive? That one is still alive, but it does have a monk and a dwarf who just climbed up and who are going to fight it. Okay, um, so I guess I, I look over to that one and then like to what I notice any of the other ones in the area. Yeah, I mean, are they all you, pretty you obvious kinda, at this point? You hung around with your party members enough that they stick out like sore thumbs, so you can see what they're doing, and they're all engaging different dragons at different points. So you you see all four of them: the west, the east, the south, and the north. All right. Which one was the one that has died already? Um, none of the dragons died, right? Oh, I thought you. No, so she. Just, no, I she killed, killed a halfling. A half <laughs> oh, you killed a halfling. Wait, oh. what? She threw a knife and it missed, and it hit the gaff. Holy the shit! Halfling. So uh, I guess I'll. Um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, target the the little dragon thing closest to the halfling that died, and. Um, I am going to uh, first, as a bonus action, uh, cast Divine uh, Favor on myself, giving um, D4 Radiant on um, on all of my hits uh, that I make. And then I'm going to take out my uh, crossbow and target that, um, that little dragon. Right. And uh, it's not looking good. That's a uh, 6 plus 2. So uh, unless that AC is... An eight or less, so I'm not hitting. Well, the good news is there's no more halflings accident hit. However, okay. you miss, and you hear a chuckle. And if you turn around and look, you see that noble saw you miss. Was it the, the one, the knight or whatever? Knight. So he does notice me. Okay. He does now. Because <laughs> he, he's got his weapon out, too. He was going to fight these dragons. He, he kind right. of stopped when he saw you, and he just... <laughs> that's that's it. Okay. Uh, before I pass over to your turn, do you want to say anything, or are you just going to... Are you good? Um, can I uh, possibly um, roll an insight to see if he, like, just laughed out of uh, just that it was funny, or, like, does he notice that I am, like, in his order? See, this is great because the more information you tell me, now I get to work with. So yeah, why don't you roll? Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Roll insight. This is typical, All right. Chris. I, I have a uh, 15 plus 5, so a dirty 20. Um, Yeah, it's kind of like a big brotherly laugh. Like, he knows you're in his order, and he's just, it's like a competitive spirit. Like, mm -hmm, watch me. Okay. <laughs> Um, I kind of, um, under my breath, kind of go, shit. All right. Uh, and, uh, that's it. Yep. <laughs> the, the last in the initiative order is now this douchebag. So he's going to pull out his crossbow, take a shot at the exact same one. Uh, <laughs> so after he chuckled at you, I just rolled a one. So <laughs> <laughs> he pulls, he, he loads style crossbow where he's got to put it on the ground really crank it and this fucker shoots himself in the foot so... <laughs> ah! hey Dan he... yeah you skipped me I did yeah all right we'll get and you me. after we'll we'll get to all the people I skipped this see this is good DM <laughs> failure stuff <laughs> I, I, it's your organization so uh yeah this bozo shot himself in the foot and is crying so we're gonna jump to the monk Ah, okay. Um, am I close enough to hit it from where I am? You absolutely are. All right. Um, Shakota is going to draw both of his short swords and try to make two attacks. 
Uh, what is my fourteen? Uh, the sword hits the top crown of the dragon, and okay. it just kind of bounces off of its horns. Okay, so not a hit. Second, uh, second sword is a twenty dirty. Fuck yeah, that hits. All right, uh, for two damage, Ooh. and then Shakota is going to uh, like glancing blow for two. And then spin all the way around and give it an elbow to the face. Hopefully. Another dirty 20. Damage? Uh, that one's five. So when you poked it for two damage, mm-hmm. the, the dragon actually opened its mouth and it started kind of chuckling as well. And I don't know if you speak draconic. But it's just, no. it's, and uh, while it's doing that, before it finishes, it gets a fucking elbow in the face and it shuts up quick. Cool. So you did seven damage to that guy? Yeah. That How bad does... seven. It looks pretty fucking shitty between the axe and its wings and now a busted up face. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not looking good. Mr. Okay. Actually, no, my math is bad. Seven and seven, 14. Yeah, you, your elbow must have hit the nose bone right into its brain because that was the last laugh it ever made. Now the fucker is down. Excellent. Sorry, Dwarf. The, uh, the dragon died before you could smash it. But it is your turn. Is there um, any... Are there any more enemies? That's a great question. You know? <laughs> I know you're good with perception rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to roll a perception? (laughs) Fifteen. Wow. So you see and hear Billy Butterscotch on the dais. (laughs) Oh no, get away! And uh, he is covered in just roots and bramble. He is just kind of being entangled up right now. And because you rolled a 15, you also see the source. Behind him is a dryad. She's kind of leaning next to a tree. And she is waving her fingers in his direction. Um, how far away is she from this platform? All right, well... If you were just jumping, say you could get there. Which one hundred percent is my plan. <laughs> by the way. So, yeah, if you if, if you're it it fifteen feet. If you want to climb down and get there, then it's going to be forty five. Can I try? I want to try and roll. I want to try and leap off the edge and cannonball with. Before you cannonball and smash this dryad to splinter, your 15 did see one other thing, or hear one other thing. So, Billy Butterscotch on the dais. You also hear some screams coming from the houses that are kind of all around you. <laughs> and you take a quick peek and you see that there's a little sprite trying to cut the rope bridges that the halflings are uh, climbing up. So... Does that change your plans at all, or are you still going to cannonball it, cannonball dr- run this way? It sure doesn't. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Fuck the halflings. Let's smush the dryad. <laughs> so what do we need to roll for this? Um, Athletics, maybe? Yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. And then an attack roll after that, I would assume. But hmm. let's see how this part goes. 13. Um... I mean, you land on your feet, but you're going to take damage because that's a big fucking drop. So That's fine. Oh. It's like 1d6 per 10 feet. All right, so I'll roll 3d6 and see what happens here. Uh, you're going to take 11 damage. That was a big ouchie. All right. Well, that's going to uh, send Thibbledorf into a rage. 
Um, yeah, but you, you did you roll that? That was you rolled athletics, but you haven't rolled to attack yet, right? Correct. Although you were, were you trying to land on top of her or just land next to her and then actually swing at her? Um, I was trying to land on top of her, but I assumed that I just didn't do well enough to do that. Uh, yeah, I guess a thirteen probably didn't get there. You're pretty close, though. You don't even have to like move. You're on your feet. You can just swing at this bee. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna pull out my maul and uh, oh crap! Why would I? <sighs> I accidentally just closed the app. Sorry. <laughs> I, like, pulled up the window where they're, like, all listed and you can click on them, and rather than clicking it, I, like, shoved it away, and so, of course, it disappeared for funsies. All right, so first attack with the mall. Uh, Ten, I'm assuming, does not hit. Uh, does not hit a dryad. She uh, shimmy shimmies away from Kind of does like the uh, the floss dance and <laughs> is able to dodge it with the floss dance. And she also just kind of like a free action says, Don't. We're saving the trees. They're the ones killing them. And Billy Butterscotch like, No! We're making syrup! Don't listen. Did you want to do anything else? Um, I did all of my attacks, and I'm assuming that a 13 also does not hit. A 13 does hit. Oh, nice! So that's, uh... So basically, he swings twice with this huge maul. She kind of dodges out of the way. And he kind of, um... Like, drops the maul to his side and just shoulder checks right into her with his, uh... Spiked armor. While she's proselytizing to you, don't do it. Ugh! <laughs> So, uh, how much damage is that maul? Uh, it's not the maul. This is my spiked armor, but it does eight points of piercing damage as I nice. check into her. Um, yeah, she's, she's not looking great, but she's, she's got some life left in her. And you see some tree sap actually spill out of her blood. And Billy Butterscotch says, oh, Sarah. <laughs> Do another round of shots if we take her down. All right, I think we are back on the initiative order. Um, I'll say the guard. I'll roll for all the guards real quick. Yeah, they suck. They're just flailing and crying and saying, save me. And we are now... Oops, I have to roll for the sprites cutting the rope. Um, so all of you all hear the sprites, the, the cries of the halflings trying to climb up to their houses. And you see the sprite now, but it's a tiny little creature, and its little needle of a knife is not seeming to get anywhere quick. So for right now, the halflings are kind of safe. Well, real quick, is there like, is this a, a ladder that they're climbing, or is this like a rope bridge between platforms, or it what? It is a rope ladder that they're climbing, and they're so dumb that they're all they're all pretty high. Okay, how many are there on there? Uh, we'll say there's five halflings, in a particular rope ladder. He's not killing the whole village. It's just one particular ladder that he's trying to squash. Okay. Um, that was it for time-based stuff. Top of the initiative order goes back to John Base. All right. What's left to kill? Um, so we've got the north one is dead. We still have the east, the west, and the south as well as a little sprite, and then you see a dais in the middle where Fibbledorf is fighting a dryad. Is there any in line of sight within under 120 feet of me? Do you remember which direction? I mean, yeah, actually, they would all be within 20 feet, no matter where you're at. So, yes. I'm throwing my javelin. Choice. Which one? A dragon or a dryad or a sprite? Dragon sounds cool. Alright. Uh, ah, shit. East. That's an eight. Never mind. Alright, well, <laughs> it goes wide, and you hear someone in the distance go, Hey! <laughs> Afterwards, uh, can I see if my hand axe fell back down, or if I can get it? Uh, yeah, it absolutely fell down when the dragon... It is 
on the ground, and it is probably about 30 feet away from you. Okay, I'm going to go grab that. That'll be my turn. Got your, you got your axe. And next is... Scotch. Oh, these are the dragons. All right. So the one that is just had the east one. I don't think anyone's engaging it. I think it's just uh, Kim threw a knife at that one, if I'm correct. So that one is going to turn towards where shit was thrown at her. It's going to fly down off the pylon, and it's going to cast color spray on I'm bad with names on Kim and that doesn't do shit spray. oh it's a lot of HP how many hit points do you have <laughs> That's always a great question. <laughs> 24. Okay, give me one second here. Uh... All right, actually calculated that. Yep, okay, I think it's good. All right, so you see a dazzling array of these flashing lights, like a strobe light in front of you. And you're going to take a little snooze now. And also... Well, there's no one else around you, so you're just you're taking a little nip nap. Oh, I thought it was color spray. Is that what color? Am I reading it wrong? Unconscious. Hmm. I thought color spray blinded you, but maybe I'm on the wrong. Oh, point. you're right. You are blinded. I'm listening to too much Beholder's Eye. So they got color spray wrong. So it is blinded. So that means that up here. Is she down? Or Kim, are you on the ground or are you yeah. up in the trees? Okay. Yeah, I tried to throw a knife and hit a halfling. <laughs> We're here for the festival and casual murder. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, sometimes, you know, things These happen. Things sometimes happen. All the best Not festivals end in it. casual yeah. murder. All right, so the strobe light. The disco ball blinded you. That's what happened. Wreck on you. Candace, that was a really worrying thing to hear from you. I'm just going to uh, say. <laughs> next. <laughs> Apropos up, of nothing. Next. We learn. Is the west one. The west wing is going to fly down. The west wing? Yep. It's going to fly down towards the. Actually, it still has a halfling to kill. Let me kill that. Uh, yeah, it the bites west the halfling's head off. The people. The West so, Wing's killing the people, guys. Another halfling falls to the ground, uh, cries, um, whimpers. Martin and Shane, then, why? And then it uses its movement when it's done killing the halfling to fly right next to the blinded uh, Kim. And lastly, the South one, which I don't, it also has a halfling fighting. I hate it. Um, that one kills his halfling <laughs> too, and you hear him fall down and say, "My wife." <laughs> so all the halflings are now dead, oh, and that one is going to also fly towards. Uh, this one's going to fly towards the the dwarf in the middle, the dais there. We have a dragon next to a dwarf. We got a dragon next to a blinded Kim. We got. Uh, Brian picking up his axe somewhere. Uh, we have a shitty noble and Elon just making bad crossbow bolts in the middle. I think the next person on initiative is not Nikki because I was no <laughs> blinded Kim. I'm trying to see if this requires sight. It does. Okay. Never mind, I can't do what I was going to do. How do you require sight? That you can see. Gosh darn it. Um, how close to me is this dragon that has landed? Five feet. It's like right next to you.
That also requires sight. Son of a bitch. Um, I can't even heal people. Uh, um, it's right next to me. Okay, I am a bardic inspiration doesn't take anything for sight. So I've already got my loot in my hands because I'm pretending I didn't kill that halfling. And um, I'm going to play a little song of inspiration for my dwarven friend who I would have healed. But anyway. Um, Please let it be blinded by the light. <laughs> that is 100% what I'm playing. <laughs> right, so you're in your Ray Charles like I've state. been blinded by the light and you are now inspired so you get an extra d6 and that was my uh, can I try to attack at disadvantage you can okay since this motherfucker flew up to me it's time to see what I can do probably not much can I have loot <laughs> I'm uh, yeah I just realized that my longsword so I have my loot in one hand, and I'm going to try to swing a longsword with the other. <laughs> uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Probably doesn't hit. <laughs> um, 11 does not hit. No, you do not. Okay, so, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, now it's Elin. Got it. Got it in one. All right. So, um, I could see that she's, uh, sort of flailing around, um, blindly <laughs> up there, and, uh, I'm Just within 60 it. feet of her, right? Yeah. Since I'm still kind of in the middle on the ground there. Okay. Um, so, uh, as a bonus action, um, I quickly, uh, take out of, um, a, a prayer parchment, um, from my side and, and rip off a piece of it, and, um whisper uh, a word of prayer um, and cast shield of faith on her and then let the the small piece of parchment like kind of fly on the wind in that direction and it'll give her plus two to AC for um, for uh, uh, 10 minutes mm, or as long as nice. I keep concentration on it and that will also um, make the concentration on my divine favor uh, cease so a lot of good I used um, with that but uh, and then with my um, with my action, I am going to um, shoot a uh, in, uh, a bolt in that direction, crossbow bolt, and that is a what is my modifier plus two? So a fourteen? Does that hit? <laughs> it does not. It play, it Fuck, plings off. What is the AC it, on these goddamn things? You gotta get it. You gotta get fifteen. It plings off the dragon. Oh man! And in between the cries of the noble, you hear another. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? I'll deal with you later. <laughs> All right, now it's Nikki's turn. Are you sure? I'm positive. All right, seeing my 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 good pal, Cape. How do you say your name? Kim Caperilla. <laughs> Cape. Call me Cape. Cape. My glorious friend Cape in distress and flailing in all directions with loot and sword. Um, I'm going <laughs> to run over there dodging her flailing weapons um, <laughs> and hold aloft a, a giant chunky block of amethyst crystal. <laughs> um, I'm and uh, I don't even know. Say something ridiculous probably. Um, I am going to cast Lesser Restoration. Whew. Um, and heal your blindness. Huzzah. May my Better holistic to... medicine heal you. <laughs> yeah. Better to fight with your eyes open, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. Uh, that, those last were something, weren't they? <laughs> They were very lovely, but <laughs> it weirds me out so much that that voice is coming from Dan's picture. <laughs> the master voices. Yeah, we're we're on the same mixer. <laughs> the scrappy Jakota, you're feeling pretty good after just punching uh, a skull through a dragon's nose. What do you want to do now? Yeah, can I 
get to the next one? I mean, you can follow your dwarven friend and do a somersault down 30 feet, or you can, if you have the movement, you can climb down 30 feet and walk uh, 15 to where where he's fighting the dryad and now a dragon. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a, uh, a, a leap off of it and make a somersault graceful in the air and parkour down. All right. Give me an acro or athletics roll. Give me athletics. How about acrobatics? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> if, you, if you said somersault, we'll go with acrobatic. It is a dirty 20. Well, you... You make most Olympian divers jealous right now. You <laughs> do a triple triple somersault, and uh, you actually land on the dragon that flew closer to bite the dwarf. Oh, so geez. Okay. Ro- roll me uh, an attack roll. Uh, ah, uh, do you want me to add anything? Yeah, I would say you're proficient because you're a fucking flipping monk. Just prove whatever your proficiency is. <laughs> So what, Dex and proficiency? Or yes. Okay. Uh, so ten plus three plus two is fifteen. All right. Well, you nail the hit. How much damage are we doing? <laughs> um. So how about I just roll my like bonus action unarmed damage, and then I'll take a swipe at it with a short sword. Sounds good. So it's five damage from landing on it, and then. Jakota is gonna hop up and take a whack at it with the sh- with the sword for an eleven. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this one is now dead. So cool beans! You just killed two fucking dragons. Mm-hmm. How do you want to kill this? Wait, I rolled an eleven to hit it with the sword. Oh, I thought you did or, eleven and five. No, 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 no. Right. No. All right. So I'll like. Give you- the 11 uh, missed, but the, you did 5 damage after rolling that dirty 20, right? Yeah. Okay. So it was like a super cool hit the ground roll, bring like the backside of his fist around to nail the dragon, and then goes for the sword swipe and just whiffs. Uh, you see fear. I mean, not from your whiff, but uh, after the bitch slap that you gave it, like with that <laughs> surprise somersault landing... Like it thought it was going to get the drop on the dwarf, and literally someone dropped on it. So it's it's not, <laughs> it's not very happy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and and I need to hop off to go sleep. All right. Um, does anyone want to like control Chakota? Because I think I can share over the character sheet. I mean, I could just say Chakota scampered off. Felt pretty good about himself and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he didn't really know you guys that well. Scampered <laughs> off to do something. Yeah, that seems good. I feel like I've done my share of the project. Here. I have done <laughs> my part. I'm going to go drink my pumpkin spice latte now. The rest Listen, is up guys, to you. it's getting late. <laughs> this has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was at that point that Shakota realized their true calling: <laughs> the, um, interior painter. <laughs> the, yeah. the whiskey the whiskey from earlier wore off and you're like oh what am I doing get out of here alright jakota has gone thanks for playing Candace <laughs> thanks Bye, for Candace. the game it was very fun have a good night Candace <laughs> thanks for you joining too. us yeah it was super fun I wish I didn't have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning <laughs> I also wish you didn't have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning that's terrible <laughs> I also have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, I have two other things on the unit. I want to fight over. Let's tally-ho. The sprite is still going to try to cut that rope. It, uh... Wait, I skipped the dwarf again. We're, you're just, like, lost in my notes here. Did you... Lost in the notes. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think I wrote you down. That's why I keep skipping you. <laughs> why don't you go ahead now? All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing at this dryad a couple of times, and hopefully it goes better than last time. No, the forest. Uh, that's a fifteen on the first one. Yep. I'm gonna actually uh, just roll all three attacks at once. Um, So the second one is uh, seven, so that doesn't hit, but the 
third one is a uh, 17. Yeah, you got two hits. All right. So the damage on, oh, wait, it's a mall. <laughs> the damage on the first one is 15. Fudge. Okay. And the second attack is 10. So, ba- <laughs> <laughs> how do you want to kill it? <laughs> okay, so um, I think that he comes around, uh, and for flavor purposes, he misses with the first attack and then sort of uh, like comes with the handle of it and puts it into her, into her gut, and she sort of leans forward. And he just leaps up into the air and just belly flops with his spiked armor <laughs> onto this dryad. Oh my god. <laughs> she is mulch. All right. She is just splinters and mulch right now when you get up after your spike uh, elbow drop. She's not getting up. And Billy Butterscotch goes, oh, My hero, thank you. come rescue me now. And he's. <laughs> Still, like, <laughs> stuck in thorns, trying to wiggle his way out. He'll look over at him, and he'll go, They call that one Moradin's elbow! And he'll look around for something else to kill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you have not done your movement yet, you can move towards the uh, one that was kind of surrounding him. So, I mean, it's not very far. You guys are, like, 15 yep. feet away. Totally going there and uh, getting ready to do bad shit to that one next. All right. Now I'll roll with this sprite and see if I kill some half Come on. Uh, yeah, so you hear a plink, and one of the two... Isn't this rope has two strands? <laughs> one of the two strands of rope from this rope ladder is finally just snaps, and these halflings just start swinging, swinging on a ladder... 25 feet in the air as this little sprite starts chuckling. I, can't, I don't have that high pitch of voice. Do you, do you want me to? <laughs> yeah. Keep... Alright, that's exactly what you guys hear. And um, the doofus who is part of Chris's backstory uh, cries a little bit about his foot some more, but he takes another sh- and he shoots his other foot because they roll a two. So... <laughs> <laughs> He's just, he's screaming, and both of his feet are stuck to the ground, and he throws his crossbow. It's like, no! <laughs> and uh, back to top of the initiative order. John Bass. All right, who's left? All right, so you have one that is currently engaged by a no longer blinded um, cape and a very bloodthirsty dwarf that's i don't know you're somewhere in the middle so you can easily walk there and then there is one other that i think is on the east side that um, no, it's... I, I am not good with logistics We're, well, there's one other you can go to one that is surrounded by a dwarf and kim or one that's kind of hanging out by itself there's the sprite too right? and can there's I, a sprite can i reach any of them uh can I get adjacent to any of them? Yeah, you can get adjacent to any anything but the sprite. Okay. Uh, I'll do the one that uh, was not already engaged. Okay. I'm going to snarls at you. I'm going you to, do to do it. swing with my great axe. Uh, only a thirteen. Um, you swing wide, and then. You connect with nothing. And you just like 360 spin backwards and you're facing it again. Hmm. And you hear peep, the bandmates that kind of shrugged you off earlier. Like they're swinging on the ladder screaming, but one of them points and goes, ha ha. <laughs> Anything else? Any bonus actions? Yeah, but... Uh, I will use, I'll take a, I'll take a hint from what I just witnessed and use my spiked armor. Oh, I gotta be raging. I'm not, I don't want to rage yet. 
You're a battle rager too? <laughs> I just picked the guy out of my list just like you did. I didn't intend to. I'm going to hold off till my next turn. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, Showed no, up to the party ass. in the same. <laughs> All right. The, so uh, embarrassing. I know. The dragon. Someone has to go home and we'll change. Start with the one that just. <laughs> the one that you just whiffed on. That dragon is. I don't know. He's feeling pretty good after seeing that that show. So he is going to. <laughs> he's going to do something called Euphoria Breath. So he exhales a puff of Euphoria gas at a creature within five feet of it. And you need to roll me a wisdom saving roll. You got to beat an 11. Which one is this? This is the one that uh, the hobgoblin just swung at and missed. Not the one that's engaged by you and the dwarf. Okay. So attack Brian. Yeah. Attacking Brian. Oh, what do I got to do? Roll a wisdom saving throw. You got to beat an 11. Okay. 17. Yeah, so you... This euphoria gas, whatever it was intended to do, it just kind of makes you feel happy. Aww. You feel, you feel like, oh, that's nice. And the dragon just kind of like puffs smoke out of his nose in frustration when he sees you're still standing there. And as a bonus action, he is going to superior invisibility. So you just don't see the dragon anymore, unless you got some cool shit I don't know about. Probably not. All right. Um, it will move away. Um, you get an attack of opportunity, but I'm going to say it's at disadvantage because this thing's invisible. Are you still talking to me? Yeah. Oh. So roll an attack at disadvantage as you swing wildly at an invisible creature that is trying to get away from you going to be a 17. Uh, yeah, even though you don't know what you're aiming at, you clearly connect to some fucking meat and roll some damage. Seven damage. Seven damage, and you broke this creature's concentration, so it is no longer invisible, but it is about... It is... Uh, 10 feet away from you. Nice. All right. Next, after Senor John Bass, is Kim. Actually, no, it's the, dra it's the other dragon. I lied. All right. So the other dragon that is surrounded by Kim and a blood raging dwarf um, feels less excited. But you guys are kind of together. So it's going to take an opportunity here and try to euphoria blast as well both of you so both of you roll me a wisdom saving throw is that the whoever is next to whoever is nearby the dragon that okay. kim and That's... kim and uh okay. tim are attacking there's three of them okay and wisdom you said yeah you guys have to beat an 11 yeah. <laughs> one uh Four plus <laughs> wisdom save. Yep. Two. <laughs> so that's a six. Wait, uh, what does this do? Fifteen. So it does have like a one d eight chart, and it does a different thing each time. So I'm gonna roll for separate of you. Um, oh boy. Do you think for... that it's like a charm like effect? Oh, let me see here. It's more like, well, I'll tell you what. It's I would say it's more like an intoxication effect. But you are a dwarf, so you'd get a bone. You get a, you get advantage on that anyway. Because it's not like it's you're not falling in love with it. It's kind of like drugging you into a drunken stupor. So since you're a dwarf, I'll say you get advantage on. That. I have an, I have advantage on things that would take me out of my rage, which is why I was asking. Oh shit! And then I crit. Nice. All right, so you shunt off this this pink smoke as well, and it smells pretty nice. Um, Kim uh, Cape is takes no actions or bonus actions and uses all of its movement in a random direction on your turn. 
Which so I don't speaks... get to do anything. I just run away. Yeah, you just kind of run randomly. You are just, you got laughing gas. The Joker's laughing gas is what happened. <laughs> Excellent. Giggling and running in a random direction. So uh, do you want to go northwest, east, or south? I... <laughs> east. All right, you are running towards uh, John Bass. And you're just going to stop. You're going to run and stop and hit him. And you're just going to giggle in front of him. <laughs> oh god <laughs> and I'm going to point at him as I'm doing so <laughs> I am more afraid of her than I was the dragon <laughs> Elin what do you want to do you saw your rival shoot both of his feet um, you've been doing pretty good with the crossbow alright well uh, when I heard him uh, laugh the second time before he shot himself the second time uh i immediately um threw the the crossbow um across my my shoulder with the sling and then used my wings to um like flay out and it like kind of uh you know moved my my cloak to the back there you know revealing my um my uh white surcoat with the the blue shoulders on it and stuff and then i um switched to holding my mace and I walked over towards him. <laughs> and uh, how far is he away from me? Oh, he's five feet away. He's not far. Okay. I, I walk uh, right up to him. And um, I ask him, uh, who is your lord? And basically, uh, he would have these two choices. Gurinder or Thace. My lord is Gurinder. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, at that point, um, I am going to uh, oh, where is it there? I am going to um, as a, a bonus action, I'm going to um, cast a spiritual weapon. Um, right behind him at uh, like basically just uh, five feet w behind him and it'll be um, a spiritual spectral like sort of replica of the same mace that I carry that's like this um, iron looking uh, mace that like uh, it looks like a bell like upturned bell at the end mm -hmm. and um, it's got a crack in it and um, I'm going to um, make a, a melee attack against him. <laughs> <laughs> you have an advantage because he literally pinned both of his feet through. <laughs> all right. And, um, all right. So that was a 16 plus, uh, my bonus. So that would be plus two on the, um, first roll and a 17 plus two on the, the second roll. So that definitely hits. And, um, that's going to be a, a 1d8 plus my spell mod. Where is my d8? I was only kidding, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't have to... Have my d8's gone. He's, between the, the damage he's done to himself and your 1d8, regardless of what your plus is, he's going to die. How do you okay? How do you want to kill this jabroni? <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll just say that I not only attack him with uh, with that spectral mace, but I attack him with my own too. And um, before I do it, um, when he when he says that uh, that he chose uh, or that his lord is Gurander, um, I say, what <laughs> I say? Uh, what is my name? Your your name is Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just strike him down with uh, both weapons simultaneously oh. and reduce him into a, a pile of bones and flesh. <laughs> it's just the watermelons splat everywhere. Uh, well, nicely done. You killed the rando. <laughs> uh -huh. um, next is Nikki. Okay, what what is left that needs to... So well, there's this sprite is knocking down... Those. Yeah, say the sprite's about 50 feet away. 
you have a... Have I seen the sprite? Yeah, everyone. You've heard the scream, so it's pretty obvious. Mm. Uh, there's one that's currently running away from the Hobgoblin, Brian. So that one's probably about 25 feet away. And then there is one that is still engaged in combat with... Actually, no, that one, that one got squished. So I think there's only... I think there's only one left, or maybe... Is Billy Butterscotch still at the fight? Uh, Billy Butterscotch is... He's hes kind of getting his way out. Oh, oh wait. Uh, Kate just got spelled again, didn't she? Okay. I'm going to chase her down again, and once again, <laughs> bless her with this... My, stu- my giant... <laughs> my giant amethyst. I'm going to sort of, like... <laughs> bop her with it this time like maybe maybe i need to use a little be a little rougher to get this to work properly usually usually my crystals work the first time but um (laughs) so i chase you down and bop you with but gently with my amethyst um (laughs) and cast lesser restoration (laughs) you can see and you're not you're not laughing anymore. I guess you already could see, but you're not. <laughs> oh, oh, what? You are having a very exciting day. <laughs> I, I, did you need to hit me quite that hard, though? That oh. yes, I did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> funny. It helps. It helps it work better. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a crystal expert. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right, but maybe go a little gentler next time. Could I'm the crystal expert, dear. You have a very lovely aura, but don't try to school me on this. <laughs> she gives you kind of a condescending. <laughs> she ain't about to fight you on it because you just <laughs> saved her from running like a chicken, so... <laughs> Uh, all right, Crystal Healer went. Uh, we no longer have Jakota, so back to the sprite. Um, I would like to drink it, please. Well, yeah, I rolled pretty well, so you can drink the sorrows of the halflings that just fell to the ground. And like, there's a pl- lot of collateral in this like fight. <laughs> four water balloons plopping at the same time. That just. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Nikki, can I get another laugh from a sprite? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it, with, with that sick, murderous chuckle, it flies into a nearby um, a nearby residence, and you hear Billy Butterscotch screaming, but not for the dead halflings. He goes, "No, that's where my syrup stash is. Stop it!" <laughs> And after the sprite, uh, the dryad's dead, the guards are dead. Jumping back to the top of the order, John Bass, you have a fairy dragon. Whoa, 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 whoa. (laughs) I thought you wrote me down. (laughs) You should, I'll take, I'll tell, I'll send you a picture of my notes later. (laughs) You're in here, so. Is it like a ketchup stain? And then like. Three, three people's names spelled incorrectly. I, I circled you three times now. <laughs> it's your turn. A circle with the compass on it. Because I have one last uh, fairy dragon that I'm on, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to uh, reckless attack uh, all of the with all of these now, which means that I have advantage, but they also get advantage on me if I don't kill it. So. Um, the first attack is going to be a 23 to hit. Uh, yeah. The second is... The okay. second is going to be a 15. Mm-hmm. That hits. And the final attack A is a... Holy shit, I rolled two 17s. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, they all hit. So this is going to be a world of hurt for this can, thing. Can you do more than 14 points of damage? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> it's right. about to be real rough. How do you want to describe this brutal onslaught? This death? Um, I think that uh, this time he comes over and 
basically is just spinning in a circle with his maul. And, <laughs> like, he's not even... He's not even attacking with any sort of, like, combat maneuver or anything like that. He's just spinning quickly and angrily with his maul, and this dragon just gets hit a few times as he sort of windmills around, and then eventually he kind of gets dizzy and tired and sort of uh, stops and sort of uh, looks around and then gets his bearings and then looks around for something else to kill. <laughs> he just Tasmanian deviled this thing, just spinning around in a, a death wheel. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's fucking dead. There's so there is only one left because the monk killed two, you killed the third and the dryad. The last one is the one that's trying to run away from uh John Bass, who now it is his turn. I'm running him down. <laughs> and I'm swinging my great axe. Son of a bitch. That's a seven. Uh, you look like a fool. I'm gonna get, nothing. I'm gonna get mad and uh, try again. Okay. There we go. Fourteen. Uh, you look less like a fool, but <laughs> it, it doesn't seem to really phase it. Like it hits, but it's it just kind of like tickles a little bit. And yes, that's it. All right. Next up is the dragon that's trying to run away. It is going to flap its wings and give you an opportunity attack because it's going to try to get from you. So go ahead and make an... another opportunity. Dope. Yes. There we go. Twenty-two. Uh, you hit. Roll some damage. I'm an angry boy. Do I do anything special for damage when I'm raging, Tim? Oh, it's yeah. Plus you two. get plus two damage on your strength attacks. Dope. <laughs> so that's wait, thirty, fourteen. Uh, yeah, three times a charm. As it kind of laughed off your two baby kisses earlier, it feels pretty confident and flies away and no longer are messing around. You smash this thing to the ground. And it's toast. Nice. It's crunched. All right, you guys are out of initiative, um, but you hear Billy Butterscotch, who finally got himself out of the brambles, is just screaming. Did so There was an ooh. Someone want to do something? Um, Thibbledorf is going to look at him and go, Hey now, hey now. I want to be put at first of the line for all of the ale <laughs> and all of the whiskeys. <laughs> and I don't give a good damn about your fucking syrup up there. You go and tend to the dead. And tend to me ale. Listen, listen. I, I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate it. Every... like kind of lift up the mall a little bit and just rip it a little bit. He's not going to like hold it in a super threatening manner. Just kind of like, are you really going to talk right now? <laughs> I, but, the, but you know, but there's whiskey up there. Lots of it. You can have it all. Casks, barrels. I will go wash. Yeah, all right. Lead the way. And he, uh, well, I'm an old man. I don't really want to lead the way, but he points. Yeah, all right. Lead the way. <laughs> As you say, um, so Billy Butterscotch is going to hobble up to the, he's going to find a working drawbridge that was not cut down by a Sprite and he's going to go to his, uh, his big house. He's not going to go inside though, because he knows there's a dangerous Sprite in there. <clears throat> and he's going to, all right. Um, well, this is, this is where you guys do your, your wacky wacky. If you manage to kill that Sprite and protect my, my syrup, I'll give you whatever you want. Yeah, all right. Are you all in agreement? Are you all going? Or are, you, are some of you just going to do the thing of Jakota and peace out? How I, many? Uh, I flap my wings down really hard and take flight and fly up to the area. And then Ooh. have my uh, spiritual weapon like slowly float towards that direction as well. 
I'm actually gonna. Um, I've I've hit my bedtime now. <laughs> we're at the final. We're at the. <laughs> Uh, Essence is going to like go around the square and start purifying it with her crystals. Right. So that's what she's doing for the rest of the night. For the for the rest of you, we're almost done. <laughs> You're doing great, babe. <laughs> Thank you. God, combat's the worst. I don't know how you guys do this. <laughs> I right. hate combat. Good night, personally. everyone. Yeah. Good, night. Good night, Nikki. Thank All you. All I have to say is that you did pick a very complicated because you had a mul- you had a multitude of levels you had creatures that could fly like you really threw yourself into the deep end for your you first combat to run, <laughs> for to the old honest. 24 hour no preparation let's <laughs> no right, well, i mean you're doing great though like i i like i honestly am super impressed i'm just letting you know that don't beat yourself up about it cuz this is a super complicated fucking scenario well, uh-huh. Also, we're we're a group of players that kind of embellish everything rather than just like roll, tell you a number, and then move on. Well, that's kind of that'd be very boring. Um, yes. So you were all outside. Somebody asked how many sprites. You only saw one, but if any of you guys want to do like a perception check by like rolling, putting your ear next to the door and trying to listen for fluttered wings. Can I make that. a kick open the, uh, this guy's door check? Yeah, you can do that. If you you see if whoever's making perception checks, I'm gonna peek in through the window okay. for a perception check, and that's a sixteen. Um, you see four other sprites. And then you also see a door probably fly open unless Tim really whiffed it. What do you roll? Um, I will roll that right now. You also see a human with that. You see four sprites and you see a human. There seems to be four of them in there. Um... That's a 23. Please tell me I kick it off the hinges. <laughs> you kick it off the hinges and you actually hear a no! And it, you squished one of them. So, <laughs> there are three sprites, a human... Well, now there's three a... sprites. <laughs> <laughs> Good job! And you also see just casts and casts of whiskey and syrup, so Billy Butterscotch mm. was not lying. But there's a, a man... Gonna... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was he's gonna just say... going to glare at Billy as he's walking into the house. <laughs> I, I I told you the truth. The little, little shit bags first. And, um, second here. So what you see, well, I don't know. What do they see, Brian? Uh, they enter in and they see a, uh, a long, dreadlocky haired person turn around and is... His whole face is just gnarly. Some of it's cracked. Other parts are peeling. Other parts have like zits and shit. And he's just smearing. He's like putting his hands into these barrels of syrup and just smearing it all over him. And he's like, Are you fucking kidding me? Are you guys fucking kidding me right now? with the story what's going on he says i finally found what i needed i charge i charge at him and i try to kill him with my mom how far away is he i need to know this is close enough oh fuck yeah i'm reckless attacking just fuck this thing and that guy and Brian and everything. I'm you will take a I'm you'll so take a parting blow up. from at least two sprites if you. Oh, I'm into it. That's fine. <laughs> uh, sixteen on the first one against your armor class. That's a hit. Um, fifteen on the second one. Also, um, and then oh, by the way, I'm raging because <laughs> I see that he's fucking <laughs> spreading, and then yeah, seventeen. So they all hit. So I'll go ahead and roll this uh, smattering of damage for you. 
because God, I want you dead now. N- not yesterday, now. <laughs> you wanted me dead yesterday, too. <laughs> and Sunday. Uh, that's 30 damage in total. As what? You just... <laughs> How's Soapy looking? Rough. <laughs> Rougher well, than he was before. Tim, did the 14 parting blows, did they hit you? Uh, no. Okay. Their little pinpricks do nothing as your blind rage over this, this syrupy, sticky boy. <laughs> and you pummel him to shit. Uh, next, I guess we're doing initiative because we were out of it. Let's just keep the same initiative. Um, Good call. So the last, so if Tim just went, he's always the one I'm saving for last. It'll be John Bass. Well, your John Bass is, well, I guess we didn't talk about that, Brian. Is he still there? Is he just John Bass is dead. Aw. All right. Just like right, John Brian ba- should be. <laughs> John Bass fell down the rope ladder. He broke his neck. No one paid any attention to him. Uh, next up <laughs> then would be Elin. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wouldn't it be uh, Capriella? Uh, she higher decks than me. Oh, that's I right. Am. She she goes first. Um, I don't, was, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but I'm just gonna go after these things, and I'm going to walk in the room and take my longsword to one of the sprites. <laughs> that's a fifteen to hit. You got it. You're looking for fifteens. Oh, wow. Yay. Um, do, 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 do. I did not specify that I put my loot away, so I'm still swinging. <laughs> Excellent. I haven't done damage yet. Where's my damage dice? There you are. Three, four, five. S- five. Five damage. Uh, you hear the faintest little... <laughs> it falls to the ground dead. <laughs> And you feel very proud and big of yourself because you just squashed a sprite. <laughs> well, at least I could help with something. Any other actions or bonus actions? Um, sure. I will attempt to bardically inspire, so I will sheath my sword and do my uh, guitar riff of inspiration. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be Pour some sugar on me. <laughs> I think it's probably inspired Snoopy for that. You go, You're next. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, next is would be Elin then. All right, so, uh, yeah, I fly into the room, and um, how far apart are the sprites? Uh, the sprites are about 10 feet apart. Um, they're on either side of 10 feet apart, opposite sides of Cape. All right, so I, I fly in, like, literally right me- next to Cape, um, kind of splitting the difference between both of them, and I am going to uh, cast a Word of Radiance. Um, so each of them must make a uh, con save or take 1d6 radiant damage. Ooh, what am I looking for? And uh, hold on just a second here. Um, uh, 13. I rolled a 10. They both, uh, how much damage is that? 1d6. And so that will be... Come on, one. Roll one. That's a one. <laughs> yeah! They're down, but they're not out. All right. Um. So after Elin, Cape, I think we... Let's go with... Uh, let's go with Sticky Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you got anything after that, that ass whooping? Mm, yeah. Uh, he gets mad and he says... I will make women beautiful as he turns into a fire snake. And then uh, I'm going to 
You have advantage on your attacks against me, by the way. Excellent. I'm going to use a level three spell slot to smite this guy with a bite. So maybe 19 to hit. Um, that meets. That hits. Uh, holy shit. <laughs> you have a high AC. And then... It's gonna be... One, two, four. Actually, I want to do this when I'm in chat. Well, that's not going to work if you roll it like that, Brian. Why? Oh, that's because I'm an idiot. I mean, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, oh, and I used his level 3 spell. I'm just gonna listen to the the reveal reaction drop over and over again of Tim going, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what uh what level paladin are you, Brian? Uh was three. Oh damn. What level druid? Four. Oh fuck. Okay. <laughs> Oh, the other one to see. Okay. So, all right. Now that I've learned how to be a fire snake, all in total, that makes 17 damage. I need you to divide it. I need you to divide it up to what types of oh, damage. Oh, you're though. right. You're right. You're right. So, the uh, four was a bite. That's just regular. What is it? Piercing. Okay. Piercing. Fine. Cool. The eight. Good. Great. Grand. The eight was radiant. Okay. And then the last five was fire. Coolio. And then I have a multi-attack. All right. Um, uh, but this doesn't count for my smite, right? I already used that. I can't use it again. This is just regular attack. I would, I think. Otherwise, I don't know. I've never played a paladin, remember? I had, to, I had to expend a spell slot, so I'd be expending two spell slots in one turn. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't think that. Uh, I don't think you can smite twice in a turn. Um, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen to hit. That doesn't hit. Son of a bitch! All right, I think that's my turn. Um, you are you adjacent to me, or did you move away? Yeah, I'm adjacent to you, and also uh, not even bloodied. <laughs> I'm gonna my it. pot is eighteen, so I'll end my turn. Uh, the barely, I mean, the barely fluttering sprites are gonna go to the paladin that just did light damage to him. So each one rolled a whopping ten. I'm guessing that does not pierce through your your armor, Elon. Not, not even a little bit close. And they look up at you, very pitiful, and and they look sad. And then after them, it would be. Um, it would be Cape's turn. Excellent. Um, they are basically base to base with you now because they flew into attack and Elon's like back to back with you. Okie doke. Um, mm -hmm, mm, I'm out of bardic inspiration. Uh, and my last bardic would go to Elin, by the way, because I can't do two to one person at the same time. Um, I think I'm just going to swing at this one, because I smooshed the last one real easy, so. Ooh, another 15. Cool. 
How do you? I mean, if you do one point of damage, it's. How about six? It is like dust. It's just a splatter. Like you swatted a fly. <laughs> I like killing these things. This is fun. The other one looks very scared right now. <laughs> As it should. That's all I can do, though. I don't have any bonus actions. Senior Elin, you're up. All right. So there's just the one sprite left? The one sprite and the fire snake that's attacking the dwarf. Oh, okay. So um, for one thing, uh, I assume that my um, spiritual weapon will have uh, finally been able to make it in here. It only had a 20-foot movement speed, so I don't think sure. it would have made it last round. So um, I'm going to have it um, go within uh, five feet of um, of the fire snake and make a attack <clears throat> on it. And that is a 19 on the die, plus 2. So I'm assuming that that hits. And that'll be a uh, 6 plus my spell mod, which is 3. Um, so 9 force damage to it. And then um, with... Uh, my regular action, I am going to um, reach out and try to grab the sprite that's uh, in front of me. Using, I'm guessing, 15. a... Uh, what was that? 15 is what you need. Oh, okay, I got a 15 on the die, so plus my strength would probably be a, a 17 there. And so, uh, yeah, I, I grab it, and then I just squeeze it. <laughs> Uh, you hear a... Yeah. It's gone. Oh, okay. So you just, it just, it's you guys and Brian. It's just you guys and Brian now. The gang's all here. Oh, um, please tell me it's my turn. I think it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, took nine damage, right, Brian? Nine damage? Or snake. Yeah, from the nine force damage from the spiritual weapon. Chris did it. Oh, I didn't even hear that. I'm sorry. I thought he was attacking okay. sprites or something. He did you didn't acknowledge it, so I wanted to make sure the first one's going to be a hit. Um, okay. And then I'm going to probably roll... Oh, oh, not inspiration on that one. Um, so I hit all of them, actually. So I don't know how much uh, health uh, the snake has, but I hope it's a lot, because you're going to need it. <laughs> uh, that time it's 37. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. How's our syrup boy doing? Is he still up? Um, and remember everything that the snake doesn't take, you take uh, to syrup boy when you turn in back into him. He's not entirely up. But you do take a <laughs> you do take a d6 <laughs> of fire damage for hitting me. Okay. Before I go, go down. ahead and roll that. <coughs> Two. Go. <laughs> I'm bloodied. Congratulations. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait. So did he die? Oh. Are you are you dead now, Brian? Or are you still? Yeah. He uh he killed the fire <laughs> snake and then it morphed back into the dead body of soapy suds, whatever. The <laughs> soapy long water. <laughs> How much health did the fire snake have? 22. Oh, shit. I guess to wrap this up, Billy Butterscotch says, Thank you for for playing this three-hour fighting game that was not intended. 
<laughs> and, it was only uh, like two and a half. You're fine. Jesus Christ. Well, I have a lot. I have a lot to learn. So I appreciate you guys. I just really wanted to goof you all with uh, soapy sods after listening to that. <laughs> what, I've uh, learned, I, what I've learned. Tim's reaction Dolby. was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> what I've learned from Dolby is. If you want to get it in under two hours, you have time for a little bit of role play, one battle, and then you got to call it. Uh-huh. The it. advice I was given was, all right, someone told me that I had to do this scenario because it was very thematic with all these different layers, and they said it would give lots of options. So I just nodded my head and said, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> well, it certainly did. Was that like the little voice in the back of your head? Because that sounds like a very damn thing to come up with. <laughs> no, it, it was... <laughs> There, it was my. Well, I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus, but it was a, a fellow role player who said, "Just do this," and I said, "All right, I'll do it." And uh, I now know that combat is, as a uh, listener, I don't like it, and as a DM, I like it less. Uh huh. <laughs> well, the first rule of combat is that, as a DM, is that if you expect it to be extremely short, it's gonna take forever, and if you expect it to be really hard and take a long time, it's gonna be done in like two rounds. <laughs> That's, that's true his first battle it was just gonna be a little thing and it took forever and then he came in and killed the big bad in a couple hits <laughs> it's always hard because fucking one shots you don't have enough like there can never be enough stakes for like combat to feel meaningful for the players and so like it's because it's different when you have you know a, a two hour session that's mostly combat when you've been building to get to this, you know, big bad that has been whatever for a year. Like, that's completely different than, you know, oh, hey, shit's popping off at this festival, so let's fucking beat the shit out of some, uh, like, I personally like combat, which is why I like min-maxing characters, and so I love the shit out of just, you know, jumping off of uh, stuff and... (laughs) Not even listening to the the reasons that the dryad had just smash <laughs> everything. That was a red herring. She had no real reasons. I just the game was real soapy, and <laughs> when, the, when the combat took really fucking long, skip everything else and let's just have soapy pop up. Awesome. By the way, after the battle, uh, Elin would have gone back down to the body of the other knight and. Um, ripped the blue patches off of the shoulders and then um, also like ripped the uh, silver amulet off of, uh, from around his neck and pocketed that and then um, picked up the body and would have thrown it in the back of the cart. Chris and his character stories. Thibbledorf would have absolutely loaded up every last barrel of whiskey <laughs> that that man had because he said, and I quote, <laughs> you can have it all. <laughs> and so we will take all of it. Well, I, uh, looks at your mall. Okay. <laughs> Man. <laughs> DMing, DMing's hard. I need to be more. I need like a 